Carl worked for the United States Air Force and owned his own duck farming business. After growing up on a family farm, Carl also raised and showed horses. Carl's first wife was named Christina. Sadly, she died in a tragic house fire that occurred with the entire family inside. Carl removed his three children from the home, but Christina was trapped in the bathroom and did not make it out of the house. Carl and Christina's only son was named Levi, who would go on to have two daughters with his now ex-wife Cassie Hahn. After finally getting his life together at 23, Levi had a stable job and a loving family of his own. Unfortunately, in 2008, Levi died while working on his father's truck. The truck fell off the jack and crushed him. Carl also had two daughters with Christina named Aaron and Katie. He then remarried his second wife, Cindy Best, only two years after Christina died in the fire. The words Carlson, life insurance, and tragic death were becoming all too synonymous, and Cindy took notice. The fire that resulted in Christina's death in 1991 started while the entire Carlson family was in the home. Christina, the dedicated mother that she was, yelled for Carl to help save the children while she was trapped in the bathroom. Carl was able to get all three children out of the home safely. However, Christina was not so lucky. Officially ruled as an accident, the circumstances around the fire were nothing short of suspicious. The biggest red flag was the life insurance policy Carl took out only 19 days before Christina perished in the fire. If that wasn't enough, the fire started outside the bathroom door and the bathroom window was boarded up. Carl claimed Christina broke the window a few days earlier and he boarded it up for obvious reasons. What was odd was the fact that it was boarded up from the inside. All the children vividly remember the day of the fire. Both daughters said that Carl didn't make any effort to rescue his wife from the fire after they were safe. Even before the ambulance arrived, he told his children, Mommy's gone to heaven. Eventually, investigators determined that Christina died of smoke inhalation while trapped in the bathroom. Carl moved his family from California back to New York, Carl's home state, just four days after the fire. The California Department of Forestry investigated the fire, and lead investigator Carl Kent felt that the circumstances seemed suspicious. Additionally, the insurance investigator determined that there seemed to be evidence of the fire being set deliberately. Despite these suspicions, the $200,000 life insurance policy was paid to Carl after Christina's death. Despite being only four and six years old, both of Carl's daughters had their suspicions about the cause of the fire and their mother's death throughout their lives. The image of him just standing there was effectively burned in their memories. When the children were teenagers, they even went so far as to confront their father about their suspicions. Levi and I told our father that we knew that he had murdered our mother, Aaron said. The children would talk about how their memories of events did not add up. Still haunted by their father's words, mommy's gone to heaven, the children were convinced that Carl was to blame. Despite the suspicious circumstances and the $200,000 life insurance policy taken out just 19 days prior, law enforcement did not pursue the case for foul play. When Carl was interrogated in 2012 about the fire, he stated that the fire was mainly fueled by a kerosene spill in the home's hallway a few weeks prior. That spill just so happened to be on a carpet outside the bathroom where Christina was eventually trapped. Investigations at the time of the fire didn't take note of the kerosene spill coupled with the boarded up window. One of these items alone should have been enough to suspect that the fire was no accident but it was never reviewed or even called into question. The fire was an accident and would remain an accident for nearly two decades. The Carlson family was well known in their hometown community in New York, and Carl kept a close-knit family. Before moving to California, Carl, Christina, and the children spent a lot of time with the extended family. However, when Carl returned with his children after the fire, things had changed. Carl was described as being emotionless, numb, and very stoic. He isolated his family and would not allow his children to visit their cousins as they would have in the past. Friends that were close to Carl and Christina told a different story. They identified Carl as being controlling, causing Christina to become subdued while he was around. Carl even went so far as to answer questions for Christina, including dictating what she would have to drink. All parties close to Carl or the family reported the same changes once Carl returned from California. Levi, Carl's only son, had a rocky relationship with his father. He was known to be goofy, and he loved heavy metal music. A typical misunderstood teen, 
Levi had a strained relationship with his father, who was military trained and old fashioned. Levi moved out at the age of 16 and got married two years later. He had two daughters with his wife Cassie before their divorce after five years of marriage. Determined to change his life, Levi got a job at a factory, securing a decent wage and insurance for his children. Unlike Carl, Levi was described by many as a loving father. Once Levi moved home, he attempted to foster a stronger relationship with his own father, even spending more time on the family farm. As their relationship grew, Carl convinced Levi to do more to protect his girls if something happened. This included taking out a $700,000 life insurance policy so that the girls would be taken care of if anything happened to him. Levi agreed, and Carl helped by paying the first life insurance payment for him. Carl was named the policy's sole beneficiary, claiming that Levi's ex-wife couldn't be trusted to do what was right with the money. Carl was to distribute the money to Levi's daughters for whatever they needed upon his death. Just 17 days after finalizing the life insurance, Levi was crushed while working on his dad's truck in the family barn in 2008. The truck had its wheels removed and placed precariously on a jack. Carl then instructed his son to go underneath and do some work on the car. Carl would lead you and authorities to believe fate forced the truck off the jack as its weight crushed Levi. As the sole beneficiary, Carl got the entire $700,000 life insurance policy. For those keeping track, Carl's now $900,000 richer after the tragic deaths of his wife and son. Carl, insurance scam extraordinaire, has collected quite a hefty sum over the years. Not only did he collect $900,000 from his first wife and son's policies, but he's made several other suspicious insurance claims through the years. In 1986, he collected $10,000 due to a car fire. He also collected $115,000 from a barn fire that occurred in 2002. This payout included an insurance policy he took out on one of his horses who had recently become lame and would have to be put down otherwise. Between all these accidents, Carl has collected over a million dollars in insurance payouts. Had suspicions not been aroused by Cindy Carlson, wife number two, Carl could have doubled his bankroll. He took out a $1.2 million insurance policy on Cindy in addition to taking out policies on his granddaughters. So the question remains, why did he do it? The answer may lie in his military career. While in the army, Carl's job was to transport nuclear weapons for the Air Force. One day, the trailer caught fire and Carlson was forced to transfer the nuke to a different trailer. According to him, that had never been done before. As far as anyone knew, nothing ever happened. Perhaps Carlson learned how well a fire could hide evidence, especially on heavily insured items like military-grade trailers. Cindy grew suspicious of her husband after Levi's death in 2008. Her suspicions rose after she noticed a $1.2 million policy was taking out on her during a rough patch in their marriage. Cindy became aware of the policy on Levi only after his death. She was surprised, but didn't expect anything serious at the time. However, two years later, she began to have her suspicions. Following her gut, Cindy hired a private investigator to have a look into Carl. That was how she found out about the insurance policy taken out on her. Fear shook her to her core. She knew she needed evidence before they could act on her suspicions. So she wore a wire and interrogated Carl about Christina and Levi's deaths. Carl admitted to Cindy that he took advantage of the situation after the truck fell on Levi and didn't stop to help him. However, he denied the accident itself was his fault. Despite this denial, authorities had what they needed to begin an investigation. Carl Carlson pled guilty to second degree murder. However, because of his plea agreement, the insurance fraud charges were dropped. Carl did not admit to causing the accident that killed Levi. However, when his daughters confronted him about their mother once again, he said, quote, It's been over 20 years, and they still haven't gotten me yet. What makes you think they're going to get me now? While everyone believes he bumped the truck off the jack, Carl maintains that it fell by accident and that his only crime was not attempting to save his son. Carl was sentenced to 15 years to life for second-degree murder. He would have been eligible for parole in 2027. However, during a new investigation into the death of Christina, Carlson was finally charged with her murder. This earned him a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Those who remain are the long-term victims of such cruelty. Even though Carl faces a life sentence, the surviving children and family are still experiencing the pain of their loss. 
Carl's daughters took solace in having a definitive answer. Although they knew in their hearts that Carl was involved in their mother's death, then rest assured knowing the rest of the world agrees with them. Unfortunately, they live with some guilt over their brother's death. They wonder if maybe they'd said something sooner if he'd still be alive today. While nothing can change the past, Erin looks ahead to the future. When asked about the outcome she hopes for, she said, I want him to look me in the eye and tell me exactly what he did. Then I want him to go away for the rest of forever. Click here to watch one of these next videos and let us know whether you would rather see Carlson go to jail for life or have him get capital punishment.